So this is uh, the fourth edition of augmented textbook of homeopathic pharmacy. Uh, we launched the first edition of this book in 1986. That was long back. And today we are proud to present the fourth edition of this book. Uh, it is all renewed, facelifted, and uh, with all new content complying to the new CBDC syllabus. Now, a little bit about the CBDC syllabus uh, is that recently the NCH changed the syllabus and introduced the new competency-based dynamic curriculum for BHMS students, particularly the first year ones. Uh, this edition has been thoroughly worked upon by teachers and professors from across the country and uh, uh, in collaboration with the editorial team of Vijayan Publishers and under the leadership, uh, under the guidance of Dr. A.B. Ram Jyotis, uh, we completed this book recently. Uh, to introduce you to Sir, he is HOD, Department of Homeopathic Pharmacy, uh, Athus, um, Athura Ramam, NSS Homeopathic Medical College, Kotayam. Welcome, Sir. Now, is it clear? Slides are visible? Yes, yes sir. It's visible. Visible? Yes. Okay. So, I'm very sorry. Uh, there were some uh, technical problems for my computer to access the uh, camera as well as my microphone. Now, let us begin with some highlights of CBDC. So already the introducer has uh, given some concepts of CBDC. That is a competency-based dynamic curriculum. So it was actually National Commission for Homeopathy. They have implemented a significant revisions in the educational regulations in a view that the homeopathic to shape homeopathic physician that was capable of addressing the health needs of individuals and society. It is not a haphazard one. There was several years of thought, and it is aligns with the national education policy of 2020. And what it offers, CBDC offers. It ensures the graduates to possess knowledge, skills, and ethics. And so, who passed out the course, the program, the BHMS program, they should well versed with the knowledge, skill, and ethics. And this curriculum ensures achievable outcomes. So, it is outcome based education through modern educational methodologies. And there was a need for sensitizing the stakeholders, the management, the teachers, the students about the effective implementation of this curriculum. So we know that last year we witnessed several awareness programs, sensitization programs regarding CBDC in various parts of our country, sonal ways. And the teachers requires some training to facilitate a smooth transition from the traditional way of teaching to the outcome-based uh, teaching. And I hope the 80 percentage of our objectives are fulfilled through several uh, seminars conducted throughout the universities across the country. And considering the course objective of homeopathic pharmacy, according to our curriculum, at the end of the course, homeopathic pharmacy, the first BHM students should be able to explain the principles that govern homeopathic pharmacy, discuss about the pharmacognostical basis of homeopathic drugs, that means the identification of drugs, the essential knowledge of that, not only the knowledge, 
the skill and attitude also is included homeopathic medicine from their respective sources according to different scales and method of patentization on small scale in the laboratory they have to familiar with the methods of also and describe the pharmacology of homeopathic drugs with respect to the types of drug action fear of action pharmacological action of drugs which is integrated with metamedica anatomy and physiology so these are all new topics which is in, incorporated into our new curriculum and there was it relayed the methodology of homeopathic drug proving which is integrated with homeopathic medicine order of medicine as well as the concepts of homeopathic pathogenic trial with respect to uh, the methodology given in uh, ccrh as well as hpus apply the principles of pathology in different health care settings like opd ipd with the integrated knowledge of homeopathic philosophy and homeopathic metamedic and methods of standardization and quality control to ensure the genuineness of homeopathic medicines explains the principles of pharmacology dispensing preservation in homeopathic medicines so this has to be deal with the ipd settings as well as opd settings engage the principles of pharmacovigilance and adverse drug reactions which is related to homeopathic medicines which is a very relevant and a new topic which is introduced in 2017 onwards and ideal prescription how to deal with to evaluate the scope of research in homeopathic pharmacy in context of recent advancement and this is also a new topic which is incorporated into new syllabus to summarize the curriculum builds a foundational understanding of homeopathic pharmacy and its principles it emphasizes the combining theoretical knowledge with hands on practical experience that is why in new curriculum they have been introduced the non lecture hour instead of practical non lecture hour which uh, which can which can facilitate a better way of practical training through different educational modalities the course outcomes should be aligned with national and institutional goals finalized syllabus ensures achievement of course and pro program outcome so the the, pro the course outcomes of homeopathic pharmacy is well aligned with the program outcome outcome that is the pro the, the summarized version of pro program outcome is the the doctor who comes out of uh, this bhms program should competent enough to tackle all the aspects of uh, the homeopathic practice and the patient care now we uh, we have uh, used uh, last year the competency table to uh, plan our lesson and uh, our outcomes so here uh, to define learning outcomes and specific outcomes as per the topic i think uh, now you are all well versed with the uh, objectives slos competencies etc because we need to write the uh, teaching plan and uh, the competency as outcome competency determine the miller's pyramid level of each slo specific learning outcome classify each slo by bloom's taxonomy and wibert's level and categorize LS, slos as must know desirable and nice that appropriate teaching and assessment method for each outcome identify the integration methods horizontal vertical spiral integrations so uh, by this time all teachers must have uh, a very good idea and they have already implemented all these uh, concepts into their teaching method now what this book the newly updated dd banerji augmented textbooks of pharmacy can offer to implement cbdc educational uh, methods which is put forward by the cbdc that helps teachers and students so the updated book aligns with the competency based dynamic curriculum so the the primary objective of this book the fourth edition of is the book is to uh, incorporate all the concepts the newly 
included concepts into the textbooks. So there are the uh, topics which are already there. Didi Banerjee book is a, a complete book in third edition, but we incorporate the new newly introduced topics as for our. Hello, friend. Sir, sorry to disturb, sir. The slides are not changing, sir. That's why. Which slide it is now? It is on the first slide, sir, still now. I can see the slide, new one. No, sir, it is not now visible. Sir, I'm sorry to interrupt. You will have to uh, share the screen again to share the uh, slides. Can you see the slides now? So yes, sir. It is screen, on the top. There is a, a slideshow. Uh, you can click that and start from uh, the wherever, whichever slide you want to put up. So that will go full screen on your screen. It will be better visible to people. Right. Uh, from the beginning or from current slide, wherever you no, want from, to. From uh, the current uh, slide. And right so you can click from the current slide i think the previous the, slide uh, all the teachers will be well aware of it i'm not going into that right sir. so uh, please click uh, from the current slide and that will take you that will take the ppt on full screen and thereafter you can press enter to change the slides okay okay yeah. now it is visible new updated dd energies yes it is visible uh, please click from the current slide yeah, okay. So, what is new in this book? It is an updated textbook which aligns with the CBDC curriculum. And uh, one of the change which we made is the language is simplified. So, that was the most common uh, suggestion. We got it from our uh, uh, readers. That the language is a little difficult for students to uh, comprehends. So we try to make it more simple and uh, without diluting the essential complex homopathic pharmacy concepts. So some clear, concise explanation make it material, engaging, and accessible. So we know that uh, in new curriculum, we need to engage the students with uh, more of a non lecturer method of uh, teaching that means uh, the student has to engage they should engage in small group discussions they should engage in some project work they should engage in some activities so we are we are making some concepts uh, to facilitate these activities now rich visual aids including charts and illustrations for easy comprehension. So this is supplemented with already some diagrams and flowcharts are there for the easy comprehension, but we are additionally giving some more online resources through, uh, I will explain it, how we can assess that. Already QR code is there, you can scan it and you can have some online resources. And one of the important aspect of these online resources is uh, you can, you can update it at any any time as per the requirements now this syllabus this curriculum is not a fixed one it can change in next year some updations can be added so we can add the updated uh, contents in this online resources so this is about the in short about the summary of uh, newly updated dd banerjee augmented textbook of our homeopathic pharmacy now coming to the content of content of the book is my slide is changing 
uh, sir, you will have to click from the current slide on top or left corner of the screen and then press enter. It will change. Okay, now plan and, and now structure. Now come to the plan and structure of the book. Yes, yes. So the first unit, it discusses about uh, the introduction, the foundational understanding of the role of pharmacy in healthcare. So uh, what is the importance of this, this unit? I'm not going uh, in chapter wise, but I will give a, a summarized version of this uh, unit. So you can see you have already taught uh, uh, two batches. So you know the topics here. Now, the newly introduced uh, thing in this unit is the role and contributions of pioneers. So that is a very important topic. And uh, this unit offers a foundational understanding of drug preparations, the drug regulations, and evolution of homeopathy uh, for a newcomer, a newbie uh, in homeopathy. So when you read this uh, unit, you will get a rough idea, an introductory idea about the homeopathic pharmacy. And that is what we expected. Can you see the unit two and three? Uh, so your slide is on unit one. The eighth slide is showing. Yes, now, now we can see unit two and three. Now, unit two and unit three. Unit two, again, this unit stresses about the uh, importance of selecting appropriate vehicle to ensure its stability, efficacy, and safety of homeopathic medicine. So uh, it also ensures that uh, what is a, uh, uh, the skill a, a homeopathic student must have from this unit as per the competency table is uh, it enabled the students to select appropriate vehicles for an appropriate method of dispensing. So that is a skill he has to develop. So the knowledge, the skill, the knowledge which is helped to attain the skill is given in this unit. Now, in unit three, about the laboratory premises, and it it outlines the essential knowledge of working in a homeopathic pharmacy, starting from the laboratory premises, lab methods, instruments, even cleaning of utensils, and it also uh, give some basic idea about the first stage, first stage, and ensuring students are prepared for any emergencies in the laboratory. So uh, this unit does not have much uh, uh, much uh, addition or uh, any additions also. Coming to unit four, unit four again it has uh, some basic uh, things in uh, uh, metrology, the units, and uh, this unit introduces the international uh, standardization unit, SI units, and uh, the common units which is uh, used in homeopathic pharmacy. At, uh, because homeopathy relies on much diluted medicines, making it precise, very precise measurement is required. And this unit equip the students uh, to acquire the necessary skill a homeopathic uh, uh, doctor should possess with. And uh, unit five again uh, it deals with the preparation of medicine. So, so here it starts with some important terms and the methods of preparation of homeopathic drugs. That is the Hanumanian method and the modern medicine, mo modern uh, methods and comparing the old and new methods there is no much additions in this this unit uh, it's already there in the third edition and the important one is the industrial pharmacy and good manufacturing practices as incorporated into unit form and one of the important uh, thing in this uh, unit 5 that is missing uh, many of the respected teachers has pointed out that the chapter on 
scales of potentization and potentization. See, scales of potentization and potentization has given and disseminated in several other chapters, but in short form. But uh, we are incorporating it into uh, a, a chapter itself uh, in the next uh, uh, print edition onwards because uh, there was a confusion over in that. And uh, we surely introduce it. It already introduced in the online resources and students and teachers can, can access to this important chapter uh, in the online resources. You can just uh, scan this QR code and you can assess to the chapters on scales as well as the potentization. Now, chapter six. So chapter six, again, uh, it covers the importance of standardizations and quality control and uh, uh, the techniques such as chromatography are discussed as a tool of drug analysis here and this unit also introduces the role of bodies like uh, uh, pharmacopoeia commission for indian medicine and homeopathy and uh, we we know that there is a recent change in uh, uh, homeopathic pharmacopoeia of laboratory so homeopathic pharmacopoeia laboratory and uh, ayurvedic pharmacopoeia laboratory they merged together and forms the Homeopathic Pharmacopoeia Commission for Indian Medicine and Homeopathy. And uh, we have updated with certain drug standardization and drug standardization unit, the activities of drug standardization units of CCRH. So these are the updates uh, in this chapter. And unit seven, uh, it introduces the principles of posology and uh, uh, the several principles, so principles of prescription, principles of medication, principles of dispensing, pharmacology, external applications, etc. And finally, the students are also introduced to hospital pharmacy, where, uh, which involves a large scale dispensing in a clinical settings. And this unit uh, is a very key to understanding the practical application of homeopathic pharmacy and uh, it is in uh, short we can say the clinical pharmacy so how uh, homeopathic pharmacy can uh, add to the clinical practice and that is what is given in the uh, unit 7 now chapter 8 again it focuses on a drug proving process and uh, uh, this Heinemannian method of drug proving is discussed as a foundation for homeopathic pharma pharmacy and uh, this unit also covers homeopathic pathogenic trial and uh, modern clinical trial that documents the new effects and uh, expand how to expand the homeopathic maturity. So uh, the various forms which is given in homeopathic pathogenic trial, say for example, uh, the forms which are uh, used for uh, recording the, the health status of the provers, all these things will be included in the online resources. So we have uh, several uh, forms to uh, incorporate into homeopathic pathogenic trials. And we also plan to include the concepts of homeopathic pathogenic trial, which is uh, practiced in Europe, as well as which is given in homeopathic pharmacopoeia of United States. Unit 9 deals with the phytoconstituents and the pharmacological actions of the drug. And phytochemicals are uh, they are missing in our uh, in new uh, curriculum, new, but we are incorporated considering the importance of the phytochemicals uh, to study the drug actions. So the pharmacological action is given. And most of the time, what happens is the physiological action and pharmacological action is uh, merged, merged. So uh, we need to differentiate it. Uh, so the initially the physiological action is given and followed by the pharmacological action is given. It is our uh, effort to uh, differentiate it from uh, physiological as well as the pharmacological action. So physiological action is uh, the action of uh, 
extract the physiological the how the, uh, the physiological functions are altered due to the action of the medicine whereas a pharmacological action the effect of the drug in body Now, unit 10 is a relatively a new concept in homeopathic pharmacy, which introduces the pharmacovigilance, adverse drug reaction, medication error, and cost quality assessment. So, we in this unit, we have introduced a certain, certain uh, uh, criteria for uh, cost quality assessments and activities of pharmacovigilance centers and awareness on medicine preparation against principles and patent combinations, incompatible remedies then drug safety with reference to homeopathic pharmacopoeia quinquil. So this is a really a, a new, there are much more additions in this uh, uh, unit. Now in uh, unit 11, which deals with the legislations uh, pertaining to homeopathic pharmacy, there, there, is, there is no much change in that uh, provided. Uh, there are some uh, changes in the uh, Drugs and cosmetic rules, but it is not amended. It was only the proposal is going. So we are not included in that that amendment in that. So it, it also includes the conduct and uh, uh, the etiquette part of this. The understanding of the legal frameworks for maintaining the professional integrity is very essential for a safe and responsible homeopathic practice. Now coming to the last uh, sessions. Uh, it is about the unit 12, the scope of homeopathic pharmacy in relation to anatomy, physiology, medica, organ of medicine, veterinary, agro homeopathy. So these topic is newly introduced to uh, this new syllabus. And uh, I'm very indebted to the contributors who was uh, uh, given this, uh, this content and uh, hope this content this content which is given in the book is essential as our theme and uh, we know our uh, marks are distributed according to the theme and uh, this is included uh, not in an essay but uh, in short notes but uh, i think the topics given in the textbook is sufficient to uh, study these topics and much more updates will be there in the resources the online resources as and when we collect. Next to you, uh, next unit is uh, unit 13, which is uh, uh, comprised of the modern theories, which is related to homeopathic uh, pharmacy. So it covers the contemporary theories of drug actions, including advanced concepts, such as uh, nanomedicine, uh, which investigate the molecular uh, mechanisms of uh, homeopathic remedies. Uh, one important thing to uh, highlight is here we prioritize the research findings. We incorporate the research findings which is published in reputed peer uh, peer reviewed journals, uh, ra rather than uh, and intentionally avoiding the speculative hypothesis. We can see in previous editions and other books we can see some speculations of hypothesis. So we intentionally avoid that because it makes some confusion among the students. So whatever is there published in the peer-reviewed index journals, we incorporate it here. And uh, this unit also highlights the importance of research in homeopathy, including the drug discovery process and clinical trials. So various phases of drug trials are incorporated, equipping the students to with the knowledge of uh, scientific advancement this, in this field. The last chapter, last unit, the 14th unit, is the development of homeopathy in uh, India, which focus on the collection of uh, medicinal uh, plants and the creation of herbarium. And this unit also covers identification, preparation, and indigenous, indigenous homeopathic tracts, emphasizing the significance of local flora. That is very, very important. So students may not know about the local locally available uh, medicinal plants which are uh, used in homeopathy for a long time 
so according to the flora which is found in uh, their place they, they have to identify it so all these things are incorporated here in unit 14. so this is in short about the, the structure and plan of the book and now uh, i would like to interact with you and uh, get feedbacks and suggestions so that we can incorporate uh, as, uh, as a content in the online resources as well as uh, uh, in the next edition of the book. You are not audible, I feel. Uh, I hope I'm audible, sir. Yes. So, uh, Dr. Arun from KKC Homeopathic Medical College, he has put up a question. The content of potentization and different scales of potentization is missing in this new edition. So, uh, is it mentioned under any other chapter or where would they find it? Dr. Arun was correct. Uh, so, also some respected teachers have pointed out this one. So, the concept of potentization as such, uh, is given in some chapters but it is not enough that is why we are uh, we are incorporating it as a online resources for the, the current edition but we surely incorporate in uh, next print edition Dr. Chandrima has raised uh, uh, her hand. She wants to talk. Uh, so, Dr. Chandrima, I have allowed you uh, the video and uh, you can unmute yourself and talk. Okay, mostly the questions are uh, about potentization only. Dr. Madhusudan is also asking the same question. There is no separate chapter on potentization. There is no separate chapter on potentization in this print edition, which I have received the complementary copy. But next print edition, we will surely incorporate. But those who received the complementary copy, you can assist to separate chapter in your online resources we are adding a more information on that uh, if there are any other questions uh, you can please raise your hands to talk to sir directly or uh, you can put it in chat and i'll take up the question Uh, okay, so uh, there's a question from Dr. Chandrima. Is it possible to incorporate MCQs in uh, the next edition? Because she says that due to some technical issues, she can't talk. Uh, so this is the question that she has put up for you. Yeah, there are uh, many more things we can uh, incorporate in the online resources, like uh, Dr. as uh, Dr. Chandrima has already mentioned it. MCQs, uh, one thing. Second is the uh, the non-lecturer activities like um, small group discussion how to conduct that how to conduct the uh, project works how to conduct practicals in the sense we know that last year we have witnessed uh, rating inspection for the colleges so they have given uh, they will come and ask the students about uh, for demonstrating some practicals so they have their own uh, chronological order of uh, doing the, the SOPs. Are. So uh, we would like to introduce the SOPs of practicals that students at any moment, they can uh, they can do the practical, they can demonstrate the practical 
without any confusions. So uh, we shortly uh, introduce this concept in the online resources. And not only that, in the online resources, we are trying to incorporate the pictures of the, the real images of the plants uh, and the instruments and herbariums and many more. Uh, so before I take up the next question, uh, uh, could you please uh, uh, just reiterate the online resource that we are planning, uh, you know, QR codes and everything in this book. If you could just do that, please. The online resources consist of whatever resources, which is what are the contents which, which we could not include in the print edition. Because you know that if you include too much of content, then the volume of the book will be more, it will be large and uh, uh, the cost uh, also may raise. So that is a reason why uh, we incorporate all the additional information uh, which surely benefit uh, teachers as well as the students. It, how it helps uh, teachers, teachers can access to these online resources to plan their uh, lesson and also guide students accordingly. Students also can access to these online resources to get more information. And we know that there are uh, different categories of the students. So if some students want to know more, then they can incorporate. So I would like to introduce some more uh, uh, research articles also, which is uh, just published in peer reviewed index journals, uh, uh, which directly in connection with homeopathic pharmacy. So uh, one of the advantage of online resources is we can update it. So each and every week we can update it. So uh, that is a concept of online resources. Uh, and that may surely, I feel that it surely helps students and uh, teachers. Do oh, not sir, wait I for the next I... edition to come. Right, sir. I think uh, uh, watching something like, uh, you know, you're reading about potentization, process of distillation, etc. And you're simultaneously watching it on YouTube. So that makes a difference also, uh, yes. if, yes, uh, you know, in terms of uh, comprehension and everything. So online resource, uh, like through QR codes and uh, YouTube channels, it will be good for the student also to more uh, and, remember. And more things. Over, more over especially the standardization method, uh, students, if, you, if they read, they may not understand it. But if you see the process, for example, thin layer chromatography, thin layer chromatography is a, is a newly introduced demonstration practicals in new syllabus. And if you see that how it is conducting, then I think it will be benefit to teachers as well as students, and they can demonstrate in their own laboratories. That is advantage. Uh, so the next question we have by Dr. Uh, Janet Sindhya. She wants to know, uh, do we have any guidelines on DOPS and OSPEs? DOPS and OS, OSP, I think uh, some of the university, they have given some guidelines. Like Rajagandhi University, they have given a definite guidelines for uh, OSP. OSP is a method of evaluation, whereas the DOPS is a method of uh, summative, um, formative assessment. So uh, we definitely incorporate it in uh, the, as an online resources. Uh, we have some uh, constraints to include it in the print uh, edition because uh, the book will be voluminous. So that is why we incorporate that in the online resources. Definitely that will be the, uh, we refine the guidelines which, will, uh, which, uh, which was given by Rajivan University. I, I, I don't think any other university has given any guidelines on OSPI. There are many teachers here uh, from different university. Can anyone uh, comment on this? As far as my knowledge, only Rajiv Gandhi University has given the guidelines. Um. So there uh, is one, RUGS uh, has given some guideline, something like that they've written, RGUHS, there's one RG such guideline, right. Uh, then we have another question, um, is it mandatory for students to visit the HPL? The syllabus, it is mandatory. 
but uh, I share my concern with my fellow teachers also regarding the visit of uh, HPL. Uh, see, we have almost uh, more than 250 homeopathic medical colleges in India. If one college visits one day, then uh, how to function HPL? And uh, right now it is not the HPL, Homeopathic Pharmacopoeia Laboratory. It is both for homeopathy as well as Ayurveda. Uh, so then we have a question from Dr. Mani Bharti. Uh, the chapter 14 and 15 should be taught elaborately or not? This is the question. Uh, chapter 14, again, uh, chapter 14 is about the development of uh, homeopathic pharmacy in India and other things. It is a miscellaneous uh, chapter, but students should, it is nice to know chapters. The contents are nice to know topics, uh, not uh, must to know, but uh, we can give it as a project or a, see, for example, what I am giving last year is uh, I, I have given project to students to collect uh, the names, family and the uses of the common medicinal plants in your locality and they have to take the photographs also. So thereby we can uh, engage them and we they can do some activities regarding. So this chapter may help in doing that uh, activities. And uh, about the 13, 13 chapter, again, it is a very important chapter, but we know that now the questions are, the question paper setters are setting questions according to the theme. So now, uh, contrary to the previous years, now it is very easy to uh, get marks in homeopathic pharmacy because students can study only the question. For example, we know that there are 10 MCQs and it is already mentioned that uh, MCQ 1 should be from this team, MC, M, uh, MCQ 2 from this, this team. So they can, they can study like that and they can um, achieve high marks. And it is, it is not that uh, uh, getting a good mark or high score is a uh, mandatory. I mean, it is, it is the only objective. Our objective is to make a competent physician. So the competency is important in this uh, in this particular curriculum. So getting marks is very easy with this curriculum. If you study the themes and uh, the questions, uh, everyone can pass it. So these chapters are nice to know chapters, but we encourage them to read. We give them activities, some projects based on these chapters, which are nice to know. Thank you, sir. Uh, next, Dr. Vivek Satyadharan, he has pointed out some spelling and grammatical errors and uh, he's writing how can we inform uh, these errors in the book. Uh, so I think, uh, more than sir, I think that uh, soon after this webinar, within this week, also receive a good form when we give suggestions, uh, as well as we point out whatever errors, whatever points you have to make. So uh, that will be available to you on uh, your mail. Like, uh, next is, can you tell me how to access online resources? Uh, so we are building up on online resources, and uh, that will be available to all of you soon. Currently, we only get source books while we scan the QR code. Okay. Uh, so you'll you'll uh, only uh, you uh, will will update the QR codes and everything will be available. QR code. The online resources is on the process and that you can assess shortly. It is now in process. Uh, sir, Doctor Arun also wants to know will the content of uh, uh, these books made into a mobile app. So uh, as of now, that's not in plan, but uh, uh, Dr. Gino Joes, he wants to know what about the lesson plan? Is it mandatory? It's better to have a lesson plan. As you know, now the rating of colleges, the, one of the writing criteria is lesson plan. And it is essential documents for, you know, the criteria parameter one, two, 
and I think, uh, yeah, CAC, uh, parameter one and two. So it is better to have lesson plan, both for theory as well as non lecture. Uh, next, Dr. Srinivasa uh, Murugan, I have given you the permission to uh, unmute yourself. You can unmute yourself and uh, your uh, video cam and talk to sir. Uh, okay, we've lost connection there. Uh, if there are any other questions, you can please type in the Q&A section. Uh, so uh, regarding the lesson plan, uh, uh, he wants to know if there's any fixed template for that. There are some templates for lesson plan. It Again, it depends on the university. Uh, and you are, uh, uh, most of the colleges, they have a, a curriculum committee. So the curriculum committee in consultation with your IQAC can design your own lesson plan. There is no mandate. There are, uh, I think, uh, HEB or NCH has not uh, um, fixed any format for this. Even some universities also have not fixed format. That depends on the institutional uh, policy. Like you, your IQAC and your uh, curriculum committee consult each other and you can uh, frame a format. It is, uh, if required, uh, we can give it. Uh, you can personally contact me. I will give some uh, format of lesson plan. And it is a, it is a uh, duty of the IQAC and the curriculum committee to uh, frame a lesson plan format. Uh, so we have the next question from uh, Dr. Pankaj. He's writing, can you uh, give photographs of pioneers of homeopathic pharmacy? Because uh, that is not available to students. We'll try to incorporate in the online resources. A better picture in online resources. Uh, do we have any other questions? Uh, please type in the Q&A section. <clears throat> if there's anybody who wishes to speak to sir directly, you can please raise your hand. Uh -huh. So, okay, there's another question. Can you please suggest some formats for case-based learning and problem-based learning? Okay. Uh, we need to plan it. Actually, case-based learning is uh, uh, what we adopted here in our college. Uh, it has a uh, vertical integration. So, there a case will be uh demonstrated our case will be narrated by a uh, intern to first years and the faculty from uh, practice of medicine surgery or gynecology depends on the case they will also come for this integration and uh, we and the uh, the teachers from anatomy physiology also will be the metrimedic organon and they will discuss different aspects of uh, case starting from the histology, embryology, uh, anatomy, then physiology, pathology, all these aspects and discuss about the particular case. Whereas problem based is uh, in case based learning already case the diagnosis is uh, known to all and uh, the outcome is known to all. Whereas in problem based learning the students are uh, triggered to define the problem and solve the problem. So that is more uh, uh, brainstorming for students. So where, whereby we are giving only some some uh, hints for the student and the students have to identify. They have to collect the data and they have to make it as a problem solving for problem um, solving 
uh, method. So we give some time for this problem based learning. We'll give the the resources and give some time, and they will collect all this data and they have solved the problem and they will present in one soon. So that is what we follow in our institution. Whereas case based learning is a, a real time, and uh, we discuss all these things in the same day in the same hours. So this is what uh, we follow in our institutions. And according to the institutions and according to the uh, philosophy of thought, uh, it may differ. So this is what we uh, we follow, and uh, this this effective also. So considering the uh, effectiveness of all integration, vertical and horizontal, and even the spiral integrations. So Dr. Mani Bhati wants to know a uh, lesson plan for clinical postings will be prepared or not? Lesson planning for uh, clinical posting is not uh, mandatory because it is for uh, lecture hour and practicals. For uh, clinical posting, uh, already in our uh, syllabus and curriculum, it has given what all things we have to include and they have to uh, anyway, the students are making a logbook, right? So they have to uh, write the uh, things which is given in the format in the logbook. So logbook is mandatory for all students. It's, uh, and uh, it should not be confused with the, the practical record. Practical record is different, but logbook uh, should be maintained from all the students. And logbook should contain all the activities starting from periodic assessment, uh, term test, then projects, uh, small uh, group discussions, and the, all the activities which is carried out in the non-lecture halls, including our educational tool. Thank you, sir. There's another question. Uh, sir, is there any objection for drugs prepared in own college pharmacy and dispensing to patients as it is allowed for hospital pharmacy to prepare drugs under Schedule K? I don't think so, because uh, 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 the students are preparing medicine for their practical activities, and it should not be. We are not having license to sell or use medicines, manufacture medicines. So uh, dispensing in our hospital pharmacy we should not use the medicine which is prepared in other uh, practicals. I don't think it is a, a, a good thing to follow. Thank you, sir. Uh, if there are any other questions, you can please type in the Q&A section or you can raise your hand if you wish to speak to sir directly. Uh, till then, uh, we've dispatched all the complimentary copies for all the teachers, the pharmacy teachers. So for those of you who haven't received your copies, you'll receive them shortly. Otherwise, you can refill the same form and we'll get your addresses and our sale coordinators will contact you. I, I think we've the... already overshot time. So uh, I'm so sorry you were uh, saying something. So I thank all the contributors, uh, the content contributors, and uh, my colleagues, my respected teachers, who give uh, positive feedback as well as the suggestions. Uh, and uh, I would like to have your feedback in future also. Uh, you can have my mail or you can uh, mail to Bijan also. Uh, so that uh, it should be. Sir, I'll, uh, just uh, I'll just interrupt you, sir. Uh, we'll be releasing yes. a Google form shortly. 
uh, all of all of the pharmacy teachers who've received their complimentary books and for those who have not yet received them they'll receive this google form uh, this will be a feedback form wherein they can fill in their uh, feedback and uh, suggestions and whatever points they have to make uh, for the next edition so they'll they'll receive a form okay so we'll incorporate all the suggestions uh, put forward by we'll scrutinize it still event uh, it's all for the benefit of the students yo so i think we should conclude uh, we've already over short uh, time and uh, i don't have any other questions now so uh, we'll conclude here so thank you everybody uh, thank you sir for your time thank you thank you bj for arranging this webinar thank you sir